Joining us now via Zoom is your state representative for the 29th District, none other than Representative Brenda Carter. Representative, hello, welcome to the show. Good to have you with us Hi, again. Hi, Thank you for inviting me again. It's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. So uh, good to see you. Thank you. Complicated, busy day. We were just talking about ballots there. I don't know if you heard our conversation with uh, Clerk Binder in West Bloomfield, but uh, state getting ready to send out invitations for people to vote absentee, and that should get a lot more people in the system with uh, with uh, all that's going on out there right now, don't you think? Absolutely. I think it's a good a good idea that everyone's voice is heard this election, this very important election. And I also caught a part of the census with Mr. Metzer. Mm -hmm. I thought that was very appropriate for right now, too, because this happens every now and then where you have a presidential election and you have a census uh, 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 taking at the same time. So that if we can make things easier for the voters to be represented, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, and I think most people know, but it's certainly worth reminding them, uh, Representative Carter, I'll let you do it. Why is a census so important? Why do people have to fill out that information and get back? It's, a, it's extremely important that every household, everybody in the household is counted because this it gives the federal government a, an idea of how to appropriate money to local municipalities and states. So this is why every person, if if a person does not fill out the census, that person is not counted in the financial equation. So therefore, needed money for hospitals, needed money for anything that is federally funded is appropriated based on the numbers of the people that they they uh, receive. So it's critical. It's very important, especially after coming out of COVID-19, where a lot of uh, states are going to see a budgetary shortfall that we uh, uh, maximize our, our ability to be counted at the census. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. Thanks for reminding folks, uh, Representative Carter. So yesterday, big news. State starts to open things up a little bit. We heard from the governor. She is going to open up restaurants and bars in Zone 8 and 6, which is in northern Michigan. And I know it's not here in our neighborhood, but, you know, what happens up there, I think, will have a big impact on how quickly we can do the same down here. What are your thoughts? I think it is a wonderful idea. I know that the governor has been watching, governor and her team has been watching attentively uh, what's going on with the state as far as cases and as far as deaths. And it's, as many know, the Upper Peninsula and the l Upper Lower Peninsula, they have had very small uh, cases and uh, very few deaths. And that this, I think it's appropriate that the governor opens up for the Upper Peninsula because a lot of the tourism is up in the upper peninsula and this is the industry that was hit the hardest the restaurants the uh, uh social activities of the that we have in our state we are a tourist state so to open up and open up carefully and this is what she's doing she's watching She's watching that if when the bars and the restaurants are open to a limited capacity in the Upper Peninsula, that they are they don't have a spike or a surge. A lot of the um, uh, communities in this in this in the nation where they have sparse populations, like in the Navajo Indian Reservation, very sparse, very spread out, but yet and still a huge surge in COVID nineteen cases. So she's going to be watching this, but it, I know. Personally, that it has been her intention to open up our economy in Michigan as soon as it's safe to do so. Brenda Carter is with us, 29th District, State of Michigan, covering much of our service area. Uh, Representative Carter, I got about 100 questions here, but rather than do that right now, what's on your mind today? I just thought I'd throw it back at you. You probably have some things that you uh, you feel are really important that you want to share with people. Um, and I just thought I would ask you that. Well, I really focus on safety, safety for all Michiganders. And we are facing some uh, some <laughs> dilemmas that we really haven't encountered before, like COVID-19 and the economic crisis. What's on my mind? I would like to see our state open up as soon as it is, as it is safe to do so. 
So by looking at scientific data, looking at keeping the political uh, engine out of this, but actually looking at the human uh, uh, engine, what's going to be best for each and every Michigander? What's going to be best for each and every a resident of District 19. We want to know that when we go to our local favorite pubs like the Lodge or the one I like, the Harbor House, I really love the Harbor House and miss it, that we can go in there and we can enjoy us a tasty meal safely. So some of the guidelines that's being put in place by Myosha, by the governor's team to ensure that when we do reach stage five, excuse me, stage four of the Michigan plan, that we can do that safely where our small businesses and our restaurants can um, cater to our community safely. And that's, that's what's important to me. Well, and, you know, safety is important to all of us. We want to see this go well, and so we're all going to watch what happens in northern Michigan this weekend. I know the folks in the Michigan Restaurant Association are really going to be watching because they're going to be asking the governor to do the same thing down here as soon as we can. And, and I don't know about you talking about safety. I felt so good to see the numbers that came through. We had the fewest number of deaths reported from yesterday. And, and you know, we are on the right track. We are doing really, really well here in Michigan. So hopefully we're going to get things uh, opened up. Uh, have you been watching this court case um, that, that uh, we heard at the beginning of arguments last week? Um, everyone in the state's kind of keeping an eye on and whether or not the legislature, especially the Republicans in the legislature, will prevail on their case. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, we could have a decision on that uh, maybe this week, although it will likely go to the Supreme Court. Um, any thoughts on that at all, Representative Carter? Well, you know, I did my own research on it. You know, I'm not part of the ju judiciary team or the ones involved in uh, litigating this, but I did my own research and I realized that there were two uh, statutes in law, one from 1945, which was the uh, um, uh, governor's uh, powers, emergency powers, and then the one of 1976, which were the emergency manage manager's powers. So I think these are the two that's in conflict that they're litigating right now. And the outcome of that is, like you said, probably will come out this weekend. Personally, I think the governor did what she needed to do to have those low numbers that you're talking about. Yes, it was painful. It's extremely painful for me to be locked up with my husband, who's a city councilman, for <laughs> two months. But... <laughs> But the point of the matter is we are still alive. And Michiganders, where we had that huge spike going into eight, uh, April, we are now seeing the numbers that you're seeing right now. And that's assuring. And if we can maintain that type of flattening or that lower lowering with doing the things we're doing, then we, I'm sure that the governor is going to escalate open up this, opening up businesses, which she realizes is critical to the Michigan economy. Well, we hope so. I mean, we, we hope so. We do need the economy to recover. We saw this morning when we talked to Ken Gutman from Wald Lake Schools, are very concerned about uh, the funding reduction. So we need to get this economic engine, get taxes collected, and try to get things going as quick as we can. So um, we will keep an eye on it. And I know you are probably as happy as the rest of us that we're making progress on vaccines and the numbers are getting better. So we'll just keep an eye on anything. Any final uh, uh, thoughts today before we uh, say so long? Well, I, as always, I like to give a positive shout out to the, to the residents of District 29. Once again, our numbers were extremely low compared to the uh, uh, various urban areas in Oakland County. And that took uh, adhering to the governor's, governor's uh, executive orders, all of them, which now we lost your audio there for a moment, but well said. And, you know, you're right. You're right that folks have been doing a really good job here, and our local numbers have uh, played that out, and uh, we're seeing it all over the area. People are wearing their masks, keeping their distancing, and uh, if their businesses aren't supposed to be open, they haven't been open. So good job to folks in our area. Representative Carter, we see you. We can't hear you, but uh, thank you very much for joining us today, and we'll talk to you again here soon.